Whoa! America, is that everybody's favorite? Is that Lex? Yes, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are feeling great. Today, we're about to get into this annular solar eclipse and the beautiful zodiac sign, a Libra. On the course of this video, we gonna cover this beautiful annular eclipse that's gonna happen on October 2nd. And we gonna relate it a little bit back to that great American eclipse that we had earlier this year in April. So make sure y'all strapped in. Y'all know y'all rocking with Astro Aesthetics. Make sure y'all pick up a copy right now. And y'all know we about to get into some beautiful things, all right? So make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment when y'all hear something y'all love. And vibe with me, because we about to get it real litty and busy. Y'all feel me? Let's do this. Now, this next eclipse we'll have will be an annular eclipse in Libra. Remember, we spoke about our previous eclipse in April. Now, the great American eclipse that took place in April happened in the Pacific Ocean, the Americas, and it finished off the coast of Nova Scotia. Make sure y'all check out that video. This eclipse is like the antithesis of that eclipse we experienced earlier this year. Now, astronomically, we know that eclipses on average are about 173 to 180 days apart from each other. This eclipse will take place in, in Libra and it's starting in the Pacific Ocean and it'll move through South America and some folks in Antarctica will see it as a partial eclipse. So also this eclipse is highlighting the Southern hemisphere of South America on the Western hemisphere, all right? So this is the eclipse of the Southern tip of South America. I didn't realize how epic this eclipse was, but that great American eclipse was really lit. And this is kind of like the South American version once again. So you can see that both of these eclipses are strong and potent for the Americas. This highlights the Southern Hemisphere. Those that live in Argentina, Chile, close to the tip of South America will be affected by this eclipse astronomically the most. And we won't be able to see it in the Northern Hemisphere like we did the last one. Astronomically, this eclipse will be powerful, but the sun astrologically is in detriment or fall in Libra because the sun is exalted in Aries. Now that last eclipse in April, Mercury was retrograde at 25 degrees, but this eclipse, the new moon in Libra, will happen at around 10 degrees, 11 degrees Libra. Now, we know in astrosthetics, we get an eclipse like this when the moon goes in front of the sun. That's why it's called a solar eclipse. And the moon, it will take place by the moon's descending node in the equinoctial sign of Libra, the scales. In astrosthetics, we call Libra the game changer. It's the sign of equilibrium. This governs relationships, how we relate to the external world, others, and perception. This eclipse is very similar to the last eclipse, but Mercury is about 165 degrees away in Libra. And this can deal with society, social media, the internet, the working class, social migration, technology, electrical power, but this really gets that social dynamic going. People may express strong differences in their social ideologies, how they perceive society, division in people groups, but this is great for noticing trends in the social construct. Libra and astrosthetics governs perception, your perspective casted on the outside world. This, after this eclipse, a lot of people will view society differently, personal dynamics will change, society values, current agreements. People might go back on some of their contractual obligations or perceive them differently. This eclipse also takes place in Libra and Jupiter is in Gemini, which adds a tinge of beauty to this eclipse. Jupiter been saving a day for these eclipses, especially that last great American eclipse, but Venus, is also going to be in Scorpio and we're going to do another video on that because that's important for these eclipses as well. And keep in mind again that the last eclipse Mercury was retrograde, but on this eclipse Mercury is going to be direct or prograde and it's going to be conjunct the sun and the moon. Communication, something will be communicated and this can highlight social migration and this eclipse is focused in South America. 
in particular Chile, Argentina, some parts of Mexico, and some parts of South America towards the southern tip, they'll experience this as a partial eclipse, all right? In totality, it does highlight foreigners, and keep in mind that the moon shadow travels at about 2,000 miles per hour, and this eclipse will take place around 6 p.m., and once again, it'll be a new moon in Libra. This is usually when eclipses like this take place. This will also happen a bit around a supermoon. Now, it, it's not going to be as brilliant as the Great American Eclipse, but it'll still be a powerful one. And remember, the North Node's going to be in Aries. We look at the nodes as the shadow poles. And in Vedic astrology, they also call them the shadow bodies. We had a partial eclipse on September 18th, which could also highlight social shifts in domestic lands and foreign lands. So here in the U.S., we could see some shifting with foreign groups. And y'all know that conversation been started, but it also does go on to technology and labor rights. You can see some things with automobile companies, insurance companies, and local population groups be beginning to get a new perspective. This gives birth to new conversations. This can highlight values in the working class and highlight a bit of work strikes, job strikes, labor strikes, Reperceiving of the law. We're also in an election season. It's important to pay close attention to the social atmosphere during the middle of September because this highlights how we relate. But in particular, this eclipse will definitely highlight a shift in the social dynamic. Now, look, if this eclipse took place any other time, I wouldn't really say much, but it's taking place during an election cycle. That can be very alarming because in astrosthetics, Libra governs politics, relationships, partners, others, deals, contracts, equilibrium, discussion, the viewpoint, relationships, equilibrium, once again, relatability, relatives, beauty, peace, harmony, the social design and the social construct, cinematography, photography, alignment, and most importantly for this season, Libra can also govern voting rights. This can also govern your voting rights, okay? And remember, y'all, everything that I'm saying is in this 500-page book, Astrosthetics. Make sure y'all get it right now. And this also goes into why this eclipse is crucial to the worldwide social construct as well. You might see some shifting in the finances because if people can't agree or they're perceiving resources differently, there can be major differences of opinion on the world stage. So make sure you pay close attention to opposing parties because that's also what Libra governs in astrosthetics. The secret to Libra is the point of equality, and you can remix it however you choose to, but Libra is always gonna be about relativity. What are you relating with? Who are you relating with? Who are you relating to? And Libra is an air sign, so it's inquisitive, curious, and ultimately perceptive. Essentially, this is also a time when people really gonna reveal how they truly feel about you, but that's because you're noticing it in yourself. Now look, if we have an annular eclipse in Libra, that means that one of the, uh, the, the nodes are on the other side. So we're gonna have the North Node in Aries. The North Node and the South Node, they're always across from each other, always. And this is also where change can occur in the Department of Self, self-advancement, focusing on self. And some people may even make strong advancements in health, healthcare, how they take care of themselves. And actively, some people will be focusing on these things for a long run. So that personal energy that people can pay attention to, they can also put that towards how they deal with others. So you can see a lot of alteration in the social dynamic with how people deal with each other. Now, y'all, we're going to do more videos on this, but make sure y'all check out our next video of what exactly happens during an eclipse. Now, we did a previous video on it when we were speaking about the Great American Eclipse. And once again, all eclipses involve the sun, earth, and the moon, or the sun, moon, and the earth. But anytime you're dealing with uh, an eclipse, you're always going to be dealing with those three variables. 
Now, this eclipse in particular, as we mentioned, it's kind of like the twin of the great American eclipse. It might not be as powerful as that one because look, the great American eclipse, the sun was exalted in Aries, y'all. I really need people to understand how powerful that eclipse was. It was that exalted. It, it's The sun is exalted in Aries. Where the sun was at in Aries is also exalted. That eclipse wasn't normal, y'all. That was really taking charge, new beginnings. Y'all know Aries is the sign of new beginnings. This is literally when life comes anew, the springtime. And when it's springtime, life becomes anew. But the sun does great, particularly in all fire signs. I might say that the sun prefers Aries and Leo a little bit more than Sagittarius, just a little bit. The sun still loves all fire signs, all right? And when the sun was in Aries, y'all, Mercury was in retrograde as well. So when it's a Mercury retrograde, you know that this is going to deal with remembering and reprocessing certain things. We're going to have a Mercury retrograde in about two, six weeks from now, seven weeks in December around there. And this eclipse, Mercury is going to be in Libra. That adds a bit of a, a some type of diplomatic sensibility because Mercury astrostatic shows us that this is where the mind is at. This is what you're processing, how you process, how you go about figuring things out, analyzing, gaining detail, breaking things down to common ground. That's why in astrostatics, we look at Mercury as the transmitter, what is being communicated. And we know that Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and also the closest planet to other planets, right? And astronomically, astrologically and astrostatics, that's why we say that Mercury gets the, the word first. But when Mercury is in Libra, this diplomatic relative point of the zodiac, this is all about how you navigate the other side. This is why Libras do so great with negotiation, even Tauruses as well. But Libra and Pisces are the most billionaires. Like Libra is first, most of the billionaires are Libras. Then the second is Pisces, all right? And look, shout out to my Pisces too. Pisces power, we in the building, all right? Libra, when you're playing with Libra, you're dealing with a whole new different dynamic. Libra is still governed by Venus, just like Taurus. This is why it's interesting. Taurus governs finances, but them Libras be it, is most billionaires, but they're both governed by Venus. They both have Venusian dreams. Okay. So you're still dealing with a Venusian energy here. So the ruler of Libra is Venus. All right, but we're going to do another video on that because when we want to know what's going on with Libra, we're going to have to look a little bit at what's going on with Venus and everything around Libra. The ruler of Libra is Venus. All right. The planet of beauty, love, harmony, the senses, the physical senses, and even the etheric senses as well in tandem with the moon. Right. You know that the moon, Venus, Jupiter, these are very transcendental sh energies, right? Because a lot of people don't talk about the feminine side of Jupiter. Jupiter is a very is the invisible one. Jupiter is very mysterious as well. It can li literally govern illusions and distorting things. But in the jovial way, that's why Jupiter can deal with laughter and greed and absorbing and expanding, right? And when you expand, you absorb the space around you. So Jupiter can also deal with protrusion and the transmission of fluids. But when you have Jupiter in Gemini, and y'all know that Jupiter is going retrograde soon. I mean, y'all, Jupiter might be retrograde right now. Now, I don't think Jupiter is retrograde right now, but Jupiter retrograde is coming. And y'all know we're going to have a video for you. Jupiter and Gemini, this is why we can also notice people thinking completely different. You'll notice, wait, I don't think like these people or these people think completely different than me because Gemini is about the mindset. 
Astrosthetics, Gemini deals with the intellect, how we go about acquiring data, how we acquire information, how we think, how we process information. Because once again, we're dealing with a mercurial energy. Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. So when you have a Mercury in Libra, well, this is great, but Jupiter is in Gemini and Jupiter is not a fan of Gemini because you got to get a lot of information in, in a short amount of time. And that's why with Jupiter and Gemini, it could, you always going to have to process. It's a lot of things going on. Once again, we make sure y'all check out our previous videos. We gonna start dropping some clips because we told y'all pay attention to them international waters. Jupiter can deal with international waters and the surrounding bodies, right? So this can deal with international people and international contracts, international data, international differences in, in, in the mindset. This is when you'll really begin to notice a difference in, in thinking and out of this you can have a, a difference in values right a difference in what you would consider valuable or what matters and that's why this time is very important especially when it's around an election season and the election season this is next level because mars is also gonna be in can star and we know we have a mars retrograde coming up but right around the time of the election, Mars is going to be in Canstar, and Mars is not a fan of Canstar. Mars likes being in Capricorn. Mars does not like being in Canstar. No, Mars in Canstar this season, I don't, aside from Ju, that's why I said Jupiter and Gemini is saving the day. I promise y'all, Jupiter and Gemini, even though it's different, the, the differences in thinking that you might have or the social division, because Jupiter and Gemini, it could be a lot of social division as well, right? But whether it be people talking about culture, even people on the internet saying things, and it's like, wait, I don't agree with that. It, it's a lot of that social division, social shifting, social fluctuation, a busy information system. And that's why we said Jupiter and Gemini is a media firestorm. It's a media firestorm, but it also can deal with localities. And when we have this eclipse that's going to be going on in Libra on the South Node, the South Node deals with mystery. What some people call it the past life. Some people call it the, 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 the tail, the dragon's tail. All right. Because we know that the North Node is the dragon's head. And the south node, Ketu, the north node, Rahu, the south node, Ketu, is the dragon's tail. And as we said, they're always going to be diametrically apart from one another. But the south node and astrostatics, how we see it, can deal with karmic reprogramming. Even if it doesn't necessarily deal with the past life, it's still very karmic and uh, unconscious point that you have to confront. It's the tail of the dragon. It's a bit wanderless. It's a bit restless. It wants to be attached and reconnect with something. And that's where the, the karmic reprogramming dynamic comes in when you're dealing with the South Node. And yeah, this is an astrostatics. And make sure y'all check out the next video that I do because we're going to have a beautiful diagram for you where we'll break down what exactly happens during an eclipse. And we'll go into some of the astronomical and the astrological variations of that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, make sure I pick up a copy of Astrostatics, the aesthetics of astrology. And I thank all of y'all for checking out the Bible Zone on YouTube. Y'all see, we having fun giving you some great entertainment news, commentary. And look, y'all, make sure y'all watch the astrology videos because we be telling y'all about what's going on now years and months and days and weeks before they happen. I, I promise you, y'all, watch watch the Jupiter and Gemini video that we did a few months ago and look at what's going on. Like it's and I thank y'all so much. I know y'all loving the commentary. Thank y'all for the 1000 subscribers. It means a lot. And anybody that want to collaborate and do some amazing um, some amazing creative stuff, please feel free to reach out. All right. Let's vibe out. Let's have a great time. 
and do something dynamic with it. And y'all know I appreciate y'all very much, all right? And y'all know it's flex. Make America flex again, because it's a flex again. It's Astro Bay. P. Yeah.